and welcome to part two of three of the water tower build series. Today I'm building the actual water tower. If you haven't seen part one, you can find the link down below. I want the legs of the water tower angled out by three degrees. That is three degrees of what would be a vertical line through the base of the tower. I need these three degrees in two planes. The legs basically need to angle out as much as they need to angle to the left, well, or right. So what I need to cut is what's called a compound miter. Those two angles, three degrees, to be cut at the same time. The whole design and building it with this temporary top plate is based on a video April Wilkerson did and while she certainly doesn't need my support I have linked her video down below. With the top plate in place I can stand the whole thing up and then work in the upright position. It also makes it much nicer to film. To fit onto the foundation the legs need to be 34 inches apart and luckily they are. Now I'm holding everything in place with some temporary braces before I screw in the actual braces. Everything is made from cedar and it's actually way cheaper to buy some wider boards and, and rip them down to about one and a half inches for those cross braces than buying, well, one and a half inch boards. All those horizontal pieces I cut a little wider, I screwed them in place and then cut them flush with the legs of the tower in the next step. It didn't take long to get all those horizontal pieces installed. Now for the cross braces. I cut a miter at the bottom and top so they sit inside of the horizontal braces. And in hindsight this is probably not the best way of doing it. I should have cut them flush with the legs again so that they would have sat a little more to the outside. But well, on the next one I know what to do. 
These cross braces are flexible enough so they can overlap with each other and don't need any kind of lap joint. Now I needed some sort of a base for the water barrel to sit on and I was entirely building this out of scrap wood so I had to scramble a little bit to find the best pieces and somewhat arrange them in a square pattern. And I also wanted it a little bit bigger than the temporary plate which is just 24 by 24 so I think this is 28 by 28 inches. To attach the base plate to the rest of the tower I needed another piece of wood and again cut with a 3 degrees bevel. Now I can remove the temporary top plate and install the real one. And that's almost it. Now for my favorite part, painting, or in this case, staining. The cedar itself is very rot resistant without any protection, however if I'm putting this paint on, this stain on, it will keep it from getting grey over time and it just looks a lot nicer. Thanks for watching and I hope I see you back next week for part 3.